So most of the chemistry problems that we end up solving come down to being unit conversion problems. And I'm gonna teach you a technique called dimensional analysis. This is where we're looking at the units to tell us what to do. I learned this as a junior in high school physics class and I would say this is probably the most useful thing I learned in all of high school. It's dimensional analysis. So we should always include units in our calculations. The units can be multiplied, divided, etc. You treat them like variables in algebra. So whatever you would do with x, you, would, you can do with meters. Meters times meters is meters squared. Meters divided by meters cancels out, goes away. Um, when we're converting from one unit to another, we need a relationship between the, the two numbers. That, that's sometimes called a unit equation. So an example of that would be 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch. The numbers are different here because the size of the unit is different. But these are both descriptions of the same length. Okay, So we know that those two things are equal. A conversion factor we can make from a unit equation. A conversion factor is going to be a fraction. And we've got something on the top and something on the bottom, and they are equal to each other. So we can take that uh, unit factor and turn it into a conversion factor. So we can put 2.54 centimeters on the top and divide by one inch. 2.54 centimeters is the same as one inch. They are equal to each other. So numerically, what is this equal to? One. It's, it's equal to one. If you multiply something by one, does it change it? No. So we could write it that way. We can also write it upside down. We could put one inch on top and 2.54 centimeters on the bottom. One inch equals 2.54 centimeters. This is all, also equal to one. So if I have uh, 4.5 inches and I want to know how long that is in centimeters, I want to change the units I have this inch and I want that to go away so I need to divide by inch because inch over inch is one and it cancels out. I want to multiply by centimeters because that's the unit I want and so I look at the units and then I say well what's the relationship between centimeters and inches? One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. I guess we might as well finish that. 4.5 times 2.54. Calculator says 11.43. We should always consider significant figures. This is exact. And what you do with an exact number is you just ignore it. And so you look at this one. This one has two sig figs. That's exact. I'm ignoring it. So this should have two sig figs. And so that's equal to 11 centimeters. We should always use sig figs, yeah. And um, this is an example of an exact conversion factor. So that's not going to change the number of significant figures. Sometimes the, the conversion factors are not exact. Hopefully the problem is set up so that um, the conversion factor is more precise than your measurement, so that you're not losing things by converting. So most of them, most conversion problems will take this form. You're given something, you've got a given unit, and um, you're trying to find a different unit. And so you've got the given unit, you're going to multiply by a conversion factor and get the desired units. So I kind of already did an example like that, so I'm going to skip that one. So general strategy for these problems. Identify the starting point what's given, identify the end, where am I going, and then figure out how to get there. It's a little bit like finding Starbucks at the Stanford Mall. Very big, confusing place. So what do you do? Well, I know, I know where I'm going. I'm going to Starbucks. 
I don't know where I am though. So you gotta find one of those maps, right? The map always has like a red circle or something. It says, you are here. Because if you don't know where you are, you can't figure out how to get anywhere else. So now I know where I am and I look on the map, I find Starbucks, and then I figure out how am I gonna get there? There's more than one way to get there. Some are longer, some are shorter ways, but there's multiple ways to get there. Um, so I, I call that a path, the book calls it a conceptual plan. Um, another um, way to approach this is to sort, strategize, solve, and check. So sorting, pulling the numbers out, writing them down, figuring out what they mean. Strategize, where am I, where am I going, how am I going to get there? Then do the problem and check your work at the end. So let's, let's look at metric prefixes. Conversion factors can be easily made with metric prefixes. So if you have a base unit, um, meters, grams, liters, something like that, and the same unit with a prefix, it's very easy to make the conversion. So here I, I'm trying to look at kilometers and meters. This does not have a prefix. This does have a prefix. I have one prefix. I can do this one in one step. What does kilo mean? Well, you look up in the chart if you haven't memorized it yet. Kilo means 10 to the 3. So one kilometer is one times 10 to the third meters. I write 10 to the third instead of the prefix. Okay? You never put the prefix and the multiplier, the 10 to the something, together. If both of those units have prefixes, maybe we're going from centimeters to nanometers. I look at my starting unit, I look at my ending unit, I have two prefixes, centi and nano. Do it in two steps, okay? Could it be done in one step? Yes, but it involves a lot of thinking and I'm all for doing it simple with less thinking, okay? You do it in two steps. So you convert from one to the unit without a prefix, and then you convert from that base unit to the other unit that has a prefix. So if we're gonna write the relationships there, one centimeter equals how many meters? One times 10 to the what? Centi means minus two, one one hundredth. And then going from meters to nanometers, one nanometer is one times 10 to the minus nine meters. So I've got the prefix on one side and I've got the 10 to the something that it represents on the other side. There are other ways to do this. Some of you may say, well, but one meter is 100 centimeters. Yes, that's true. And if you can do that consistently, you go right ahead and do it. But I end up seeing people say that one centimeter is 100 meters. That's like saying an inch is 12 feet. You've got the number in the wrong place, right? So I am going to consistently do calculations with the metric system this way. Okay, if, if you're good at it and can do it a different way, that's fine, but I'm not gonna do it in class, okay? Any questions? Okay, let's do some practice. Convert 2.88 centimeters to yards. We need to know where we're starting, where we're going. What unit are we starting with? Centimeters. centimeters. This is a very simple problem. It usually the more words, the more complicated. Not many words here. So we're starting with centimeters, and what unit are we ending up with? Yards. Yards, okay. So there's my beginning and my end. Now I have to figure out how to get there. Now, could you Google the relationship between centimeters and yards? Sure you could. Can you do that on an exam? No. Nope. So don't do that. 
just use the things in that table that's in your textbook. It's in the slides, so if you don't have a book, you can go, go to uh, Canvas and take a screenshot of it and have a nice copy of it on your phone with you always. I will give you relationships like that that are needed on an exam. So if we look at that, one of the things you're going to see is that there's a relationship between centimeters and inches, right? This is a, an English unit that's a metric unit. Some point we're going to have to go from metric to English. So centimeters to inches, and I also told you that's one that you should memorize. Then going from inches to yards. Well, some of us remember that a yard is 36 inches. Some of us only remember that a foot is 12 inches and a yard is three feet, right? So let's pretend that we don't remember the 36. So I know the relationship between inches and feet and between feet and yards. Each of these steps has to be something where you know the relationship between these two things. It's a little bit like um, finding stepping stones to jump across a river. Right, so I'm, I'm here and I want to get to the other bank, but I don't want to get my feet wet, so I'm going to find a rock I can jump on. And then I'm going to find another rock to step on, a stepping stone. And then another one. Now somebody else might be able to jump farther. They may be able to go from here directly to there. But if you can't jump that far, don't. You'll fall in the water. This is the hardest part of the problem. Once you have the path, the rest of it, follows a pattern and it's going to fall into place. I'm going to show you what to do. Okay, so we look at this and we count the arrows. There's three arrows. That means I'm going to use three conversion factors. So I'm going to start with my number, 288 centimeters. I have three arrows. I'm going to have three conversion factors. I'm just going to write those out. I'm going to look at these units. These are the units that go on the tops of all these fractions. Centimeters to inches to feet to yards. So here I've got centimeters. This will be inches, feet, and yards. You see that? I'm just copying the path down into my equation. I'm trying to get rid of the unit centimeter and so in this fraction, I want to divide by centimeters because centimeters divided by centimeters cancels out. In the next term, I want to divide by inches so the inches cancel out. And in the final term, I want to divide by feet so the feet cancel out. Any questions? It's not too hard. Some of you may be able to do this in a different way. Some of you, you know, can just kind of do this in your head and write down the answer. That's awesome, but that's not going to work when we get to stoichiometry and some other complicated things. Let's learn this technique now, okay? Believe me, I have over 20 years of experience. This is better, okay? So on the worksheet today, there's some unit conversions. I want you to do it this way. Okay, I want you to do it this way. We've got all the units in place. The units now tell us where to put the numbers. There's less thinking. I don't have to remember, well, should I multiply? Should I divide by that number? What do I do? You just put the numbers with the units. So here, I need the relationship between inches and centimeters. Well, one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. What's in the numerator has to be equal to what's in the denominator. Because really what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by one. And so I'm not changing the length, I'm just changing the units. Relationship between feet and inches. How many feet? One foot, how many inches? 12. Yards and feet. Three feet is one yard. Now I use my calculator. Do this in a systematic way. There's no need to write down intermediate values or anything. 
You take the 288, you multiply by the top of the next fraction, you divide by the bottom. Multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. Multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. Now, do you have to multiply by one? No, you don't. Some people feel more comfortable doing that, so it's absolutely fine. It's also fine to skip it. So 2.288 times 1 divided by 2.54 times 1 divided by 12 times 1 divided by 3 equals. So I'm getting a big mess. How many significant figures should my answer have? 3. So my starting number had 3 significant figures. Yes, it's a whole number, but that doesn't mean it's exact. It's 288 centimeters. This conversion factor is exact because I told you it was. These are defined quantities within the English system. They are also exact. So I don't need to look at those numbers at all. My answer has the same number of sig figs, three. So the calculator is showing me a mess, but I'm gonna write down the first three and I'm gonna underline that third one to remind myself that's where I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna write down two extra digits just in case I need this number later. The unit would be yards. And then I'm going to round it. The 9 tells me I have to round this up to 3.15 yards. Any questions? That is dimensional analysis. It's all going to be variations on that. Let's convert 9,255 9, cubic centimeters to gallons. Well, we're starting with cubic centimeters, right? And we're trying to find gallons. These are fairly simple problems, so that where I'm starting, where I'm ending up isn't too bad. How do I get there? I don't know the relationship between these two units. I'm not gonna go ask Siri or Google it. I'm gonna go to that chart. So blah, 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 blah. Back here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Oops. There it is. So what if I only have this available? Could I do it? Well, I had cubic centimeters and gallons. So I'm going to look around in here. Uh, I don't want to mess with my pointer. Um, so I've got gallons to liters, right? I'm going to write this on the board because my short-term memory is mostly gone. One gallon, 3.785 liters. And um, cubic centimeters and liters, it's, it's actually written on this chart, but we should be able to figure that one out. So this is the thing that I'm missing. I wouldn't expect you to remember that because I don't remember that one. It's not all that useful to me. So finding this tells me that if I, if I got to liters, I could convert liters to gallons because I found this relationship. And this relationship is given in that table, but let's pretend it wasn't. What is another name for a cubic centimeter? A milliliter. So converting cubic centimeters to milliliters is super easy. Can I convert milliliters to liters? Yeah, they're both liters. One has a prefix, one doesn't. I can do that in one step. There's my path. It's not the only path, but it's the one I'm gonna use. Okay, so 9255 cubic centimeters, three arrows, three fractions. So I look at my path. You really, really should write down the path. Cubic centimeters to milliliters to liters to gallons. Cubic centimeters to milliliters to liters to gallons. We did the hard part. Now we're just copying stuff down. I take the previous unit, cubic centimeters, and I'm gonna put that in the denominator so those cancel out. And then I put milliliters down here so those cancel out and liters down here, so those cancel out. Make sure that your units are really doing what you want them to. 
all the units are taken care of, now I put in numbers. So this one I looked up and wrote on the board, the relationship between gallons and liters. So there's a one with gallon. So it's one gallon is equal to 3.785 liters. I don't want to switch that around because one liter is not the same as 3.785 gallons. Here in the middle, I've got liters and milliliters. Milli is down here. What I need to do is I need to write the multiplier up here. M, milli, means 10 to the negative 3. So I'm going to put 10 to the negative 3 up here. 1 times 10 to the negative 3 liters is equal to 1 milliliter. All you have to have is the memorized prefixes. And then here, milliliters and cubic centimeters. That's the one we sometimes overlook. The same thing. One milliliter, one cubic centimeter. If you want, if it's not confusing, you can just say, well, instead of cubic centimeters, I'm just going to write milliliters up there and be done with it. That's fine, too. Okay, we got all of the stuff in here. 9255 times 1 divided by 1 times this thing. Scientific notation. Yeah, there's different ways you can get it into your calculator. Use the scientific notation button. It's either EE or EXP, or some of them it's times 10 to the X. That stands for times 10 to the. So to enter this in my calculator, my calculator went to sleep, I'm going to put 1 EE negative 3. I don't press times 10 or do a caret or anything. 1 EE negative 3 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 3.785 press the equals. And I'm going to think about significant figures before I write my answer down. How many sig figs in the starting number? Four. Exact? Exact? Is this one exact? No, we've got English and metric. This one's not exact. This is saying exactly one gallon is 3.785 liters with uncertainty in the five. Four sig figs. So I've got four and four, so my answer should have four. So I think about that as I write, my in, write this down. 2.445, I write down those first four digits and two extras. And then I round this 2.445 and the unit left standing is gallons. Yes. Yeah, you can do one liter is 10 to the third milliliters. Um, I'm not going to show it in class, though, because people end up telling me that one milliliter is 10 to the third liters. A milliliter, a cubic centimeter, is 502 liter bottles of soda? No. So, you know, it's easy to get those numbers backwards. If if you've got it straight in your head, absolutely. If I wasn't teaching the class, that's probably how I would do it. Any other questions? <coughs> no, I have to. Remember all that stuff? Oh, look at that. I didn't, forgot about that. Anyway, okay. Compound units. Um, derived units like volume. You take a, a length and you cube it to get a volume. What do you do with the conversion factors? So you start out with just the regular unit. So here, if we're converting cubic centimeters into cubic inches, first just look at the relationship between centimeters and inches. Actually, this one isn't cubed, this is squared. Um, so this relationship is true. This is an equality. Right? If I want it to remain an equality, then I have to do the same thing to both sides of the equal sign. Right? So if I want centimeters squared, I can square this whole side, put parentheses around it, 2.54 square centimeters. S centimeters, I'm sorry, the quantity squared. And I can square the other side. So when you square the whole thing, you're squaring the number and the unit. 
2.54 squared is approximately 6.45. Over here, one inch the quantity squared, one squared is still one, and so we end up with one inch squared. And so we get this relationship between centimeters squared and inches squared. The number has to be squared. Because if we look at a square here, that's one inch on a side, what's the area? It's one inch times one inch, right? One square inch. If I measure that in centimeters instead, 2.54 centimeters on this side, 2.54 centimeters on that side. The area is 2.54 centimeters times 2.54 centimeters. Had a glitch, I'm gonna start this part over again. So the area is 2.54 centimeters times 2.54 centimeters. So that would be 6.4, well, actually let's step that back a minute. That would be 2.54 squared centimeters squared, right? Or 6.45 square centimeters. That is equal to one square inch. Sometimes students will say, well, one square inch is 2.5 square centimeters. You gotta square the number two, okay? How many cubic centimeters are there in 2.11 cubic yards? Well, what unit am I starting with? <coughs> Yards cubed. And what am I trying to get to? Cubic centimeters. Cubic centimeters. Okay. To figure out how to get there. So we did centimeters to yards in a previous problem. We, we went to inches in the middle, right? So I know the relationship between inches and centimeters. What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm just sort of ignoring the three, the exponent for a minute, and looking at the path without the cube. So I can do inches to centimeters. Let's say now that I remembered that there's 36 inches so let's say I remember that there's 36 inches in a yard. Then I can do the yards to inches directly. So the relationships I'm using over here is um, one yard equals 36 inches and one inch is 2.54 centimeters. I got two, two arrows, so I'm gonna just do two fractions here. 2.11 yards cubed times in a line times in a line yards cubed to inches cubed to centimeters cubed yards cubed down here those cancel out inches cubed down here those cancel out Relationship between inches and yards. I wrote it down over here so I wouldn't forget. 36 inches is a yard. But I have to cube the number as well. So I've got cubic inches and cubic yards. So the number 36 needs to be cubed. And the number 1 needs to be cubed. Of course, if you forget that, it's the same, right? 1 inch is 2.54 centimeters but it's cubed, so I need to cube the number. Okay? You can simplify that, you know, write it out if you want. I just use the uh, raising to a power button on my calculator. So 2.11, and I'm gonna multiply by 36 to the third power, and I'm gonna divide by one, and then I'm going to multiply by 2.54 to the third power, divide by 1, equals. How many sig figs? Three. Original number has three. 
this one's exact, that one's exact. So I'm gonna write down my number. One, six, one, there's three sig figs. Um, this is a big number. I need to keep going until I get to the decimal point. 1.31, 3, 2, 1, 0. And then there's a decimal point, 0.75. That, that, that part's gonna get cut off. You could also just go straight to scientific notation here. Here I'm rounding in the 10,000s place, so I need to be careful. 161,000, sorry, 1,613,210 is not the same as 161. And if it is, I'll do some real estate transactions with you. And you know, I'll give you $161 for your $1.6 million house. Right? Would that be good? Be good for me. Don't change the value of numbers when you round them. 1.61 times 10 to the something. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's a positive 6 because it's a big number. Units, cubic centimeters. Now, could you write 161? You could. Those zeros are ambiguous. My rule of thumb is anytime I can't just look at the zeros and immediately tell how many there are, which is usually if there's more than three, if I have to get my finger out and count the zeros, put it in scientific notation. Whether they're at the end or at the beginning, it's easier. Question? You're not getting that number. Okay. Um, did anybody else get my number? Okay, there's probably an issue with how you're cubing the numbers, and we can look at that during lab, okay? It's always a good idea to have your calculator and go through this with me. I make mistakes sometimes, and it's really fun to catch me making a mistake. Yeah? So we would never cube that whole number, and we have to put it according to the decimals? So since those we're, we're always going to consider significant figures. Yeah. And, you know, on the first exam, there will be questions that are specifically about significant figures. Um, then in the rest of the course, um, I, I won't be marking off points. I won't be tricking you with sig figs on an exam. But you need to understand um, how sig figs work and the fact that, you know, if, if the exam question gave 1.613 times 10 to the 6 and you came up with one six one three two one zero. That's actually the same, right? 